What's up, dudes and girls? Um, or chicks? Yeah, I'm listening to Young and Free, why not? Most contemporary music these days is no good, but I like this song. Alrighty then. Alright, you guys, I have a, uh, another article here. By the way, it is the 8th of July, 2014, and I am your host, Ant-Man. And uh, I got an article in front of me called Three Ways God Responds to Wicked Leaders. And if you're questioning whether your leader is wicked or not, why don't we look at what Politico is posting on uh, at this very moment. Barack Obama has now requested $3.7 billion to aid illegal immigrant children that are coming over the border that are not with any parents. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but my head is starting to hurt with all this, like, ridiculous nonsense going on today. I mean, whoa. Have we really come this far that we just let people, you know, are, are, are immigrants above the law now? And, like, I can't even, you know, uh, for example, like, if I get caught with, like, a, like, you know, like a, uh, I don't know... You know how many little things I can go to jail for and there are immigrants that are just running amok in our country right now with bringing diseases over here? Man, I have a lot of sympathy for, the, for those people though, man. Because my, my family came from El Salvador, but we did things right. You know what I mean? My, 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 great, my grandfather came here. He, he paved the way for our entire family to be here and he paid for our future. Everything, man. He wanted, I mean, my grandfather was a real man, you know, he, he thought about his family's future, and he secured it. I mean, it's really an amazing thing. My, my grandfather has an amazing story, by the way. He, uh, he wrote JFK a letter to ask for permission to bring his family over here, which, was, which would be us. And that's when JFK got assassinated, and they found his letter on his table, and it's off in the Oval Office, and they actually had to investigate my entire family because of that. But my grandfather did things right, man. I mean, I do not really agree with people breaking our laws and then being aided while there are veterans who never even get any health care. or there. I see so many veterans that are homeless and stuff, and that kind of breaks my heart. These people were willing to die and get their legs blown off for your freedom. And yet these, these people, man, I mean, it's sad what, what Mexico is, you know. It's one of the biggest failures of a country that you can ever see in your life. You gotta feel bad for them a little bit, you know. You wanna want you wanna try to help people like that, of course. But nobody is above the law, and the moment that you start treating people like they're above the law, you got tyranny. And if your if your uh, if your president is a, is condoning that, you got tyranny. But here is this is an article from like June twenty third. I've had it up. I've had it saved because I thought it would be a good read. So why not get into it now and stop wasting your time. I, know, I don't know about you, but when I look at the multifaceted ways Obama and his ilk are destroying our nation, I get more angry and depressed than Ted Nugent being forced to watch Lois Lerner do an inter interpretive dance to Boy George's song, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me? The extended cut. <laughs> Obama has overwhelmed, is truly overwhelming our nation with truly overwhelming cataclysmic crises that have left a lot of good people saying, Screw it, I'm moving to Panama. Despair seems to be the soup du jour, and it's being served up to us cold, ice cold. When I get around people who still give a flip about our nation, the, con the conversation inevitably, inevitably goes to what can we do to stop this fetid mess BHO and his boys are foistering against our land. The typical response is get knowledgeable about what our nation was originally intended to be. And what a cartoon of that we have now become. After that, get active, get vocal, protest, vote with your money. Join Facebook groups with like-minded warriors. Go to a bunch of con uh, conferences, scream at the television, and of course, vote during elections. And if you know me, and if you've seen that on my YouTube channel, I have a link to my Facebook page. And I love meeting new people, so if you guys want to be my friend on Facebook, come on and add me. Um... I use Facebook against the reason why it was invented. Facebook even c 
comes out and admits that it was manipulating emotions toward people on Facebook. I know how they were doing this because if you are like me, then you have gotten many friend requests of girls that don't exist that try to get you to talk to them. Now, you know, the first time I was like, okay, this is weird because first of all, this girl that's trying to talk to me has only one picture. She's never posted anything in her life. And she's trying to talk to me out of nowhere. I was like, this smells to high heaven already. So they have already come out and already have admitted that they are manipulating your emotions. And another thing that I've known about Facebook is that it is a, a type of survey. When you post things on Facebook, you are being monitored. People are starting to put files about who you are, what you like, what you like to say, what you believe, and all this stuff. And they got this stuff in NSA databases. I'm not even kidding you. That you are having a profile created of you in an NSA database in a building somewhere where some creepy guys in cubicles are putting together profiles about you based on your Facebook posts. Now, I use Facebook against the against the enemy. I use it to proclaim God's word. I use it to 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 write devotionals and whatnot and to expose the government's corruption. A lot of people just go on Facebook, and I'm guilty too. I mean, I feel guilty for playing video games these days because it seems like that's all anyone cares about. I love video games just as much as anyone else. But I feel so much guilt just for liking it because it's like everybody's such a zombie nowadays that all they care about is video games. So it makes me feel a little guilty, but you know what I mean? It's just, it sucks. But you got to have a healthy balance in life of this kind of stuff and all you when you see people is what they like on Facebook is putting up memes of ridiculous nonsense that doesn't make any sense and only caters to the flesh and posting pictures of whatever you're doing and that's all good and stuff but I like to use it for spiritual enlightenment and that's what the enemy hates the enemy hates when you speak God's word so um, let's get back into this article the typical response for blah, 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 I just read that. After that, get active. I just read that. Um, join Facebook groups with like-minded warriors. Go to a bunch of conferences. Scream at the television, and of course, vote during elections. Um, let's see. Okay, the problem is we do not, we do all that, and it still doesn't like or look like we're putting a dent in what the president and the progressives are doing to our land. And a lot of folks think that our votes won't count anyway because of voter fraud and corruption. Some people of faith conclude, well, I guess this is the end. Our preacher said it was going to get this way before Jesus returns to kick some ass. And they resolve themselves to apathy and cynicism and become about as active Howard Hughes was during the flu season. Uh, speaking of God, those uh, for those who still care about him and what he and his word think, what does the Bible say we should believe and look for when our, our nation is getting gutted and ransacked by leaders and policies that try to dispense with that which is holy, just, and good. Does it lead us to despair? Should we look for Jesus to rapture us out of this mess? Should our current climate make believers act like Lewis Black? Are we done for? Uh, first off, let's, let's state that as much as it might look like we're Paula Abdulling and, and going one step forward and three steps back with the best of our f efforts to right the Obama wrongs, I do believe our righteous works are working and we need to step everything that we're doing up several notches and get aggressive with the progressives. Secondly, who the heck says that God's only resource when dealing with sucky situations is to rapture his people out the mess they've allowed themselves to get into? Biblically, we've got a slew of passages that show that God can and will jackhammer rulers who dispense with his way and turn nations into a lawless idolatrous and godless mess for instance check out psalm 2 gloomy christian why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed saying let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us he who sits in the heavens laughs <laughs> I love that. I love that. The Lord holds him, uh, holds them in derision. 
Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Let's break this psalm down, shall we? So, what do we have? Well, according to the psalm, we have a nation and their rulers that's blowing off God in his righteous decree, right? Right. How does God respond? Does he pout? Quit? Move to Panama? Start over eating Hagen, uh, Hagen dazs because he's so depressed? Does he emotionally check out and start smoking weed and get into die, uh, tie-dyeing beefy teas to pass the time? Uh, let's see, what, uh, let's see, shall we? According to Psalm 2, God does three things. One, he laughs at the people and rulers who snub his ways. God, God's amused that the puny ants he has created have decided they can take things from here and they don't need his holy ways or wisdom. Not only does he laugh at these wicked rulers who seek anatomy or autonomy, but he also scoffs at them and holds them in derision. He thinks not only is their rebellion, their rebellion laughable, but he also makes fun of them and sneers at them. Didn't they ever teach you this at Sunday school? I didn't think so, but it is blip, but it is biblical, eh? <laughs> he puts a, huh? Um. It's a very, it's a very good um, thing to point out for you atheists out there. I know that temporary, contemporary Christianity today, the postmodern Christianity that you see today, is a joke. I don't blame you atheists for making fun of Christians that use God as a crutch and don't believe that they're sinners and that they need to be saved. Because that's a lot of Christians today. A lot of Christians believe that you need to only believe in Jesus Christ and you're saved. No. You need to ask yourself, what is God even saving you from? First of all, He's saving you from the darkness of your heart. He's saving you from the enemy's influence on you. He's saving you from the naivete that we all have, that we should follow our hearts, and that we should just go with the flow, and follow everyone else, and do what everyone else is doing. And I'm pretty convinced that people are like lemmings today. If you see a crowd running off a hill, you will run after them and run off that hill today because that's how, that's how, I don't even want to say it, but pathetic I see people these days. They're just willing to run off of a cliff just to fit in with a bunch of idiots. I'm sorry. I love people. But it's just that the, the stupidity of today really does amaze me. It really does. It, it makes me really, like, it makes my jaw drop. It makes me really, and you know what? I wouldn't be this discerning i wouldn't know the difference so good if i didn't read the bible if i didn't pray to god if i didn't believe in him i would not understand it either so that's what's even more amazing is that without god you are given to a reprobate mind you are made to look like a hypocrite you are made to look like a fool and believe me i look like a hypocrite too a lot all the time but that's not the point of christianity the point of christianity is that you get a clear conscience you know when you don't understand the sin issue right you either become a little too legalistic or you become a little too pathetic meaning that you become worthless and you say and you you start to think that oh woe is me and oh i cannot escape this flesh and you know it's you need to understand the word of god better if that's how you think because you're not supposed to feel that way you're not supposed to feel that way and you're not supposed to lord it over everybody by saying, uh, by trying to point out the sin so much in other believers. You should be encouraging other believers. You should be pointing out the good and telling people to move on and become stronger. Not, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's sad. The state of Christianity today is another issue that I don't want to talk about right now. Number two, God rebukes the people and the rulers crapping on the nation. Rebuke is a word we don't hear much of anymore, which makes me like it all the more. 
Rebuke is a sharp or harsh disapproval. Check it out. Psalm 2 does not say God forgives and forgets how wicked people and policies are destroying a nation or a land. It doesn't say he changed his eternal ways and is now cool with their hip, groovy 21st century decisions. It does not say he's passive and merely acknowledging or worse yet winks at their wantonness. Oh, heck no. It says he castigates the folks that are jacking things up. One of the things as a Christian, even among other Christians, that I get a lot of grief about these days is that I cannot rebuke anybody. If I rebuke anybody for them acting wrong, I get rebuked by those same people because they think, well, it's not that they think anything, it's just that the human nature is freaking corrupt. When you don't see the sin issue and people are trying to rebuke you, you are going to do everything you can to disguise yourself, to hide your nakedness, to walk away and, and, and try to divert the attention away from yourself by bringing condemnation on the person who's rebuking you. Don't judge, bro. Don't judge. Ugh. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Isn't that judging if you're telling someone to not judge? I mean... Like I said, the reprobate mind is made to look like a hypocrite and a fool. Sin is folly. You look like an idiot. That's what it's supposed to do. That's what it is used for. The enemy makes you so deceived that when you don't act like God, because you're made in the image of God, and by all means, you're supposed to act like it. But when you don't, God, he, Satan goes before God and he goes, Look at your servant. Ha, ha, ha. You call that your, you call that your beloved, you call that your, you, you know, like your, you know what I mean? Like he tries to make you look like a fool in front of God. And, and, and he, that's why he's called the accuser. And that's why anyone who's going around accusing one another of certain things that aren't true, falsely accusing people, that is the very essence of the nature of the devil. He is the accuser of the brethren. Whenever somebody says, aha, I see you sinning, that is the devil. Because you are not looking at yourself, my friend. You need to look in the mirror before you look at other people and start judging. Straight up. Um, number three. Not only does God laugh, scoff, and rebuke the unrighteous acts of ingrate leaders, Psalm 2 also states that he is out to terrify him. What does that mean? I don't know, but it sounds terrifying, doesn't it? When God arises... To whoop, your, to whoop some ass. From what I've read and seen, you don't want to be the recipient of that pool cue. In several different ways, the inspired psalmist brands the reader with the revelation that leaders and godless policies imp impotently pursued and propagated stir up God's terrible wrath and that he will unleash it on their particular heads and land. Here in this psalm, it promises given in a metaphorical way that he will break and dash their wicked ruler and their reign into pieces, whatever that means. It sounds pretty bad and pretty thorough. In conclusion, according to the Verbum Dei, God states, according to Psalm 2, that he's going to bless his people. He promises to establish his son's rule and to protect those who take refuge in him. For those who are blowing him off and leading their nation down Highway 666 to Crap Town, God promises in no small or unclear way to deal with them in an exhaustive manner, as only he can. Therefore, my brothers and sisters who love God in this great land, expose, fight, protest, vote, rally, decry, and do everything in your power to derail this dastardly dismantling of our nation. And never forget that a holy God is also monitoring this bullcrap, this BS, and will temporarily and eternally kick the backside of those who despise and dispense with his ways. Let me tell you something, postmodern Christians. God is holy and just. And he has a very passionate, furious anger toward wickedness and vileness and lasciviousness, or however you say that. <laughs> but he hates sin. He is not going to pardon the sinner if he doesn't repent. I mean, we can read Hebrews 3, Hebrews 4. We can go into a lot of scripture here that tells you do not be like the children of Israel that were wandering in the desert, that were being led around by Moses, that didn't have faith, and that fell in the desert. Don't be that way. Don't 
don't rebel, don't be disobedient. Instead, why don't you just listen to God? He's got your back. He's got you. Chill. He has got you covered. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to live in fear. You All you need to do is trust in God and know that if the sparrows of the air, if the birds of the air that neither reap or sow or gather into barns are being taken care of by God, and, and if a bird gets sold for how many, you know, how, however it says in the Bible, a couple of, uh, I don't know about these ancient, uh, you know, uh, monies that they used to say in the old te or in the New Testament, but how much more of worth are you? How much more is God going to clothe you? How much more is God going to feed you? How much more is God going to take care of you? Ah, <sighs> the moment that we all realize that we could go back to being America again. But other than that, I don't recognize this country anymore. I tell you, verily, I tell you the truth. Verily, verily, I tell you that we are not going to be slaves. We already are. So you better wake up. It's not going to get any better than this. You got issues flooding this country over. I mean, if you really pay attention, the issues of today, the waves that are hitting against everyone today are overwhelming everyone to the point where if you look at the progressive liberals, you see straight up mental illness. These people are mentally ill, dude. To, to, I mean, I could go on about that, but what I'm going to do is leave you alone. Because I know that you can figure these out, things out from smarter guys than me. Look at Dinesh D'Souza, the guy that just came out with another movie, America. How America has become. And how Costco has just, you know, that's my next video, by the way, about Dinesh D'Souza's book being brought down by Costco and being taken out and whatnot because of the truth. It's the truth. If we don't face it, we will face what we're, what we have, what we've been seeing in all these Alex Jones movies and all these Dinesh D'Souza movies and all these, you know, name your, name your, uh, conservative Christian or libertarian that, that is an activist. Name him. And he's got a movie about us going into slavery and Obama being a tyrant Muslim. Hello? When are you going to wake up? When are you going to give a damn? But anyways, I love you. And I, and I want you to take care, all right? I don't want this to overwhelm you and go, oh! Okay, the sun is shining. The birds are chirping. Life is beautiful. So don't get your boxers in a bunch, your panties in a bunch. I don't know. But anyways, sorry. Don't mean to be vulgar, but I love you. God bless.